Greetings, I'm Dr. Tim Welty, uh, Professor and Chair of Clinical Sciences of the College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences at Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa. I've been asked by the American Epilepsy Society to provide a summary of a recent article published, uh, which I co-authored in Epilepsy Kernics. Uh, my co-authors on that uh, article were Dr. Adrian Lupke, who at the time of the article was a pharmacy student at the University of Wisconsin, and Dr. Barry Goodell, who is professor and chair of pharmacy practice at the University of Wisconsin. The article that we wrote dealt with a summary of uh, cannabidiol uh, and is entitled Cannabidiol Promises and Pitfalls. In that article, we attempt to look at uh, the issue of medical marijuana and uh, in particular, the use of cannabidiol for intractable epilepsy. As most of you know, the topic of medical marijuana and in particular cannabidiol has been um, hotly debated in public circles and uh, many advocates have been able to uh, advocate and lobby state legislators for uh, laws that allow possession of cannabidiol for the treatment of uh, intractable epilepsy, especially in children with Dravet's syndrome. Um, cannabidiol is considered to be the non-hallucinogenic component of uh, marijuana or cannabis, and uh, is typically uh, administered in an oil uh, compound, a non-toxic oil, and is given uh, via oral administration. What we attempt to do in our article is to discuss and consider three major questions. The first is, what is the basic pharmacologic evidence that cannabidiol may be beneficial for the treatment of epilepsy? The second question is, what, um, what clinical evidence is available to support the use of cannabidiol. And the third question is, what are the standards and, um, and uh, purity, uh, for the purity of cannabidiol products uh, if a patient were to take a cannabidiol product? So first of all, let me consider the basic pharmacology. Uh, cannabidiol is, um, activity is actively meted, mediated by G-coupled uh, proteins, receptors. Uh, there are two cannabinoid type receptors that are present in the body. Uh, cannabinoid type 1 or CBD1 receptors that are typically expressed in the central nervous system and are considered to be the uh, basis for any activity of cannabidiol. The second receptors are cannabinoid type 2 receptors or CB2 receptors, um, and these are expressed primarily in the immune system and so may play a role in immunity in the human body. At uh, low concentrations, uh, cannabidiol appears to interact with CB1 receptors in a way that results in decreased glutamate release as well as upregulation of GABA synapses in the brain. However, it's also interesting to note that uh, cannabidiol has very low affinity for CB1 receptors. It has high affinity for CB2 receptors, which could impact immune and immu immunity and immune responses in the body. Animal models suggest that cannabidiol, uh, combined with other anti-epileptic drugs, may indeed be beneficial in seizure control. So now that we have a little bit of the basic pharmacology, what is the clinical evidence that suggests that cannabidiol may be effective in patients with epilepsy? There were two studies that looked at marijuana use uh, in patients diagnosed with epilepsy. Both of these studies looked at self-reporting of patients and both concluded that uh, marijuana use may be helpful in controlling seizures. However, it's important to note that these were only based on patient self-reporting and not on any scientific data. There has been a two-phase 
uh, double-blinded study of cannabidiol in patients with epilepsy and in normal volunteers. That study was done in a limited number of patients, less than 50 patients and, and subjects. But it did suggest that the patients with epilepsy may have had some improvement when taking cannabidiol combined with their other anti-epileptic drugs. Again, that, uh, that data is very limited and in a very small number of patients, and statistical significance could not be determined. There was a Cochrane systematic review of the subject of cannabidiol for epilepsy, and that study or that review um, concluded that there was insufficient quality and quantity of data related to cannabidiol use in patients to either support its, its use or its safety in uh, treating patients with epilepsy. So while there are some clinical data that suggest that uh, cannabidiol is helpful or potentially beneficial in patients with epilepsy, uh, it does not meet the typical scientific standards that we uh, hold for new uh, anti-epileptic drug products. Another issue that is very, very important for cannabidiol is the issue of standards for cannabidiol products. In the United States, the U.S. Pharmacopeia Convention sets the standards for, for analysis, for quality, for purity, uh, for composition of drug products. The Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, is responsible for ensuring that manufacturers meet those standards that are set by the USP and also that manufacturers of drug products meet uh, good manufacturing practices. Because cannabidiol is not an approved drug uh, and, in fact, is restricted in the United States, there are no quality standards for cannabidiol products. The USP sets no standards for content and purity, and the FDA does not have any monitoring standards for manufacturers of cannabidiol products in terms of of the quality uh, of the manufacturing process. So this is a major concern with cannabidiol products that may be on, a mar on the market. There are no standards or no regulations to ensure the safety and the purity of those products. So in conclusion, our article, in our article, we suggest that there are preliminary data that may indicate that cannabidiol is useful and, and, and there is sufficient data to encourage people to investigate cannabidiol more thoroughly for the treatment of epilepsy. However, at this point in time, there are really insufficient uh, data, both in terms of quantity and quality, to say that cannabidiol should be accepted as uh, clinical practice in the treatment of intractable epilepsy. Thank you for your interest in our article, and uh, I hope you find this helpful.